Yo, yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another Titan Talk. Thanks so much for kicking off your week with us here on a Monday. I'm Isaiah Kilgoon here as usual, but today we've got another very special guest. I know people out in the community always love seeing your face. We've got Max, aka Innocent Rabbit, here, and we're going to be talking about some matchmaking stuff today. We're going to be talking matchmaking. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, Speaking of my titles, um, hilarious thing. I just saw that I'm officially in the Smite 2 credits. Max Johnson, data guy. Uh, (laughs) My now official credit. So, uh, yeah. Well deserved. And if you you haven't seen it, we did, uh, uh, Dale, one of our programmers, uh, secretly added credits to the game in the the most recent update. So if you hit the escape uh, button and go to the menu, you can see the credits. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of amazing folks on the Titan Forge team. Oh, your mic is off. One second. I can unmute you. Boom. Sorry, chat. Here we are. Alex, wrong mic. Oh, wrong mic. Oh. Sorry. There we go. Can you hear me now? We're we're vibing now. Sound great. You sound (laughs) so good. Awesome. Sorry about that. Uh, (laughs) I grabbed the wrong microphone. But yes. As you can tell, when production is not here, you know, things are a little bit scoffed. But hey, we're here. It's not in front. Yes, we're vibing. All right, there we go. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is uh, there's credits now in the game. Uh, so if you push the escape button, go to the menu, you can see credits from the home screen. So um, kind of fun. Cool. Well, Max is here. We're going to be talking about matchmaking here in a little bit. But before we get into that, we had a patch go live just about an hour ago with lots of balance and bug fixes. So we're going to recap all that stuff. And then we'll get into a little deep dive discussion with Max on some of the awesome matchmaking improvements mm-hmm. that he's got going on. So pulling up the handy dandy laptop. And we have got patch notes here, went out today a little bit earlier this morning, uh, kicking things off with bug fixes on the general side, teleporters fixed an issue where gods could be seen walking in place or under the map when they use the teleporter, Mm -hmm. also fixed the HUD navigation not being closable on gamepad. So that was a big one that got fixed. Uh, Moving into god bug fixes, Don Zaburo, alluring spirits, we fixed taunted enemies not basic attacking the deployable properly. Yeah, that was a really annoying one. Yeah, and then Tanuki Trickery fixed the leaf form not having movement speed increase for duration or slow immunity. So that's one of, one of those Smite 1 parody things that was missing from Smite 2. So if you're in that leaf form, you're moving just a little bit faster. Yeah, you could be a very slow leaf yeah. previously. Uh, Finrear uh, brutalized, fixed an issue where it wasn't scaling at full runes. Uh, it was only 70% at all ranks, so Brutal Eye should be feeling a little bit more in line to where it should be if you've got all those runes stacked up. Uh, Hercules, uh, on the general front, we lowered the nameplate. He gets too big, so we moved the nameplate down mm-hmm. a little bit just to kind of be in line with more what you're used to on all the other characters. And then Driving Strike, we it now has knockback immunity during the dash, and this is a Smite 1 parity change. It did not have that at first, uh, but now it does. Uh, New Watt, a big one that we saw out on social media, we fixed an issue with Clay Soldiers uh, where they were procking basic attack items uh, effects. So yeah, that was th- a big one. This was a, a a fun one maybe, but definitely a little bit OP and unintended. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the community feedback to it has been interesting. Um, I think everybody agrees that it was broken, stupid OP, yeah. you know. I saw a couple um, videos and they, yeah. were, they were doing some stuff. But also some people found it interesting. So maybe, you know, it's something we take a look at and revisit down yeah. the line. But for right now, just fixing the problem, you know, getting her back to a playable state sooner than, than later. Exactly. And then another, another issue with Clay Soldiers, uh, we've temporarily decreased the damage on the dash attack. Uh, we're currently investigating the issue with that specific attack doing more damage than intended. So mm-hmm. for right now, we've decreased that damage until we can fix the issue. Uh, and then last up for, for bug fixes, uh, Zeus, uh, Chain Lightning, we corrected the arc from six times per rank to five, 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 six uh, on the tooltip. So, yeah. So it was uh, erroneously just bouncing five times previously. Uh, and people were complaining that it wasn't bouncing six times. Yeah. So the quickest fix was, well, we'll just make it bounce six times and see how that feels. Um, and now we've got it lined up to yeah. where it's just like the tooltip says it should. Exactly. All right. Let's move on to balance here yeah it turns out herc was a little strong he was a, a strong boy yeah for sure so. i mean being able to pick up a boulder like that you got to be strong i know right yeah and uh going big mode like that too you've just got to got to be super strong so uh a big round of nerfs here for hercules so apotheosis which is the new passive we're going to be de- decreasing the strength per stack from four to three and also decreasing the strength per level on that uh yeah we think that was really a subtle secret source of a lot of his OP strength. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit, see how it feels, and we'll keep balancing from there. Exactly. And then driving 
Strike. I can't talk this morning. It's Monday. Haven't had enough caffeine. But uh, Driving Strike and Earthbreaker increase in the cooldowns by two seconds on both those to 14 seconds. And then Excavate, the ultimate, decreasing the damage on that. Yep. And as always, this is the first pass on balance here. So uh, if this is still too strong, we'll keep working on it. Yep. As you can see in the next one, we're still nerfing Baron because he's still too strong. Yep. So. so Baron getting another round of nerfs here to a few abilities. Vivid Gaze, decreasing the power reduction, the attack speed reduction, and increasing the cooldown on that. Consigned Spirits, we're going to be decreasing the percent missing health heal scaling from 20% CDR to 15% CDR. And then wrap it up, we're going to be decreasing the mes duration uh, um, from 2.25 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Yeah, maybe a little bit too much CC on that ability. Yeah. And then uh, Neath up next for nerfs. Uh, World Weaver, the ultimate, just going to be getting a scaling, ner uh, scaling nerf here. Finrear seeing an, a round of nerfs to Ragnarok, the ultimate, increasing the cooldown by 10 seconds and also increasing the mana. Uh, that way he doesn't have it up quite as often. And when he does use it, it costs a little bit more mana. And then last up for gods, Bacchus and a nerf here, another one that's been getting some nerfs uh, sporadically throughout the closed alpha phase. So Belch of the Gods going to be increasing the cooldown from 10 seconds at all ranks to start at 13 seconds and scale down to 11 seconds. Just burping slightly slower. Burping slower, a little bit less often here. And then moving on to items, we've got a few items here that are getting some nerfs here. Ring of Dispel, we're going to be decreasing the CDR. And then Ring, which is just the tier one CDR item, going to be decreasing that as well. Breastplate of Valor going to be seeing a couple of nerfs here, decreasing the physical protections, and then increasing the passive threshold on this item. Genji's Guard going to be seeing a little bit of a nerf here, decreasing the magical protection by 10. And then the Cosmic Horror going to be seeing a nerf, decreasing the int from 100 to 85. And then last but not least, Chronos Pendant, that staple cooldown item, going to be seeing a cost nerf, increasing the cost from 2400 to 2,500 gold. Yep, and then I've got a couple other uh, things that we're looking at for the future from Lermy. Um, so uh, CC in general, um, there's some reports that it's feeling like maybe there's a little too much CC right yeah. now. It's hitting a little too hard. So we're just taking a look at that and trying to figure out how we want to address that feedback, but we hear you on that. Yeah. Um, we're also uh, looking at some more changes to CDR, uh, making sure that we get that in a good place. Um, and also specifically at Amaterasu and Donzaburo. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the things we're considering is how to make the clones feel a little bit more impactful. Yeah. Um, but that's those are things we're thinking about. And then also um, we are looking at uh, Arena a little bit uh, because we're getting feedback still that it feels a little bit too snowball-y, mm -hmm. um, too easy to get out to a big lead and just be trapped in your base if you're not up, out to a big lead. Um, so taking a look at that, making sure that we have all the right kind of comeback mechanics in place. Um, you know, you, you gotta you gotta strike a balance with these things. Uh, you yeah. can't just say you can be down by a million kills and you're just as strong as right, the other team. Yeah. Um, but you want to make sure that there's still, uh, you know, some sort of balancing. Exactly. There. So, yep. yep. Cool. Well, that is it for today's patch notes. These notes are live on our Steam page as well as on our social media and in our official Discord news channel. So if you want to catch up, read the notes for yourself here, go a little bit more in depth, catch all the details. Be sure to fic, uh, hit that link and uh, check out the notes. And uh, that is it for all of our patch notes recap. And I believe we should have a Max back with us and uh, we can kind of deep dive into our matchmaking discussion here. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I nice. I, I I had muted myself. Uh, Isaiah was talking about caffeine. I was stealth making yes, coffee there you go. as <laughs> they were talking about the update. Uh, but I am back. Yeah, we can talk about some some matchmaking. Should we get straight into just <laughs> what I posted on Twitter like two seconds? Yeah, before we yeah, let's definitely do that. So uh, if you follow uh, Max, aka Innocent Rabbit, on Twitter, he just posted a tweet thread with some of the details on some of the things that he's been working on. I'm going to pull up the laptop. Unfortunately, we will lose Max in the screen, but he, his audio is still guys. here and he can still talk with it. But here we yeah, go. I'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. me. Um, yeah, uh, there's basically what happened was that. Um, Something that Alex mentioned recently is that we've recently brought someone on full time um, uh, to help us kind of full time implement changes into matchmaking, which is super cool. Um, oh, we've got a match. And here. this nice. is kind of, <laughs> oh, my God, I exist. I know. right? <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but it did. <laughs> Jameson says uh, he's got us. Ah, so. nice. Shout out. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jameson. 
Um, yeah, so this is the first fruit of that labor. Um, things are going to start happening a lot faster, which is amazing. Um, so last week on Friday, we made our first change using kind of a new system that we've been working on. Uh, and the first change, which was kind of the easiest to evaluate the outcome from, was adding SR into our matchmaking for rank. Yeah. So it's been, I mean, probably the most talked about matchmaking thing. It's the, the easiest screenshot thing. to yeah. send to us. Definitely a, a really requested thing. And we, you know, completely get it. It's something that... Um, not to get too into the weeds of it all, but it's something that we definitely designed to have to want. Um, moving towards 24 seven, there was a few unexpected things that happened. We got kind of slowed down both ourselves and a partner, uh, but now we're speeding back up and we actually, this is getting it in a lot sooner than I thought we'd even be able to get it in, mm -hmm. which is really amazing. Yeah. And so just, we, Oh, sorry, go for it. No, you go. Yeah. 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 No, I was just going to say, um, one thing that, uh, you know, we get a lot of tweets, I think because of this issue in particular of people saying, oh, there's just no matchmaking yeah. in Smite 2. But there yeah. was matchmaking happening in the background. It just wasn't taking into account SR, which is the only visible number mm -hmm. that you had connected with how good you were, yeah. right? So yeah. your background MMR was being used in matchmaking, but it wasn't taking into account your SR. So you were getting into weird situations, yeah. which I'm sure Max can talk more about. Yeah, so I mean, part of the reason that we designed SR in the first place is that um, if you are just like dependent on just a single kind of background skill value, exactly what we saw happen kind of did happen, which is that you ma make matches and like the core of those systems that have been designed forever is just make two teams that are mathematically likely to be even. Um, and what can happen, especially with, you know, we're in a paid closed alpha, there's going to be a natural decrease of player count is that to make a team to make a match for players that are really good, um, the most likely people to find to play against them are average players. So if you have two or three really good players, who do you have to play against them? Okay, a few average players, who do you have to match them with to balance those teams to worse players, to bad players? Uh, and now you have a match that feels chaotic and insane, even though the math is like, yep, two teams that are equally matched. Mm -hmm. And this is something that... Um, we're aware of, and that's part of why we wanted Rank to be based on SR, a system that is designed to help filter those situations out. Um, but matchmaking systems are super complex. I, I talk about this a little bit farther down, but I'll say it right now. Even with this change, we have, um, which you would hope would be simple, a small change like this has actually resulted in some issues with actually getting players into the match. Efficiency is really important for these systems. Um, so we have a few spot cases of players joining queue, having that get dropped. So if you have an issue where you're in like a casual queue for an amount of time that seems suspicious, like eight, 10 minutes, something like that, you definitely want to restart the queue. It's pretty, pretty uncommon right now, but it's something that we're hoping to fix like today. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like, you can't just like make these changes there. You need someone who's really experienced and that's the new person that we, that we're working with and it's been really great. So mm -hmm. awesome. yeah. I'll scroll so down. This is, uh, you can make the make the chart big. Come on, show oh, off my, yeah, my show, numbers here. Show your numbies. Yeah, show the numbies. So the the change that we've that we've put into um, ranked is that uh, we are now looking at the range of SR players in the match before evaluating anything to do with like averages of teams and whether the teams are balanced. Um, it seems like a common sense change. I think it is a common sense change. Um, but as I said, even those kind of like simple changes are really complex and they, they need to be well implemented to not cause further issues. So what we're seeing is, I mean, let's, let's call a spade a spade. Uh, the range before was frankly pretty unacceptable. Not good. Um, it was not good. It, we weren't happy with it. That's why we made the elite queue to try to get players out. And for a while that worked, but there's obvious queue times issue, queue time issues there. Um, so instead, we, we've been working away at this, and on Friday, we launched it. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was working and that the numbers were working before we made any more changes or even talk to you guys about it. We wanted to back it up with the numbers. And so even without getting like the elite players into this queue, um, without putting like a bit more emphasis on, hey, let's, let's get more people back in, um, we got some really good results. So now most matches are between two-ish ranks. Um, which for the player base, we are really happy with right now as before it was, let, let's be, we're being transparent with it. It yeah. was really wide, right? Mm -hmm. 3000 is like a five rank disparity. Yeah. So we, we weren't happy with that. Um, and, uh, but yeah. we're really excited about this. 
No, I was just gonna say now it looks yeah. like like you know less than ten percent of matches. If I am eyeballing it, are have a three thousand disparity disparity yeah. or larger, right? And it's actually better than that. Awesome. Um, it's better than that because a lot of those what we actually have it hard capped at three thousand. It can't go over three thousand. Nice. So everything you see that is over three thousand um, is how we're handling parties. Um, mm. So if you, um, yeah, we can actually just leave this up or you can scroll on the side here. Yeah, yeah there we go. So the, what, yeah, scroll on the side, perfect. So um, what happens is that it starts at 600. So it starts at searching within a single rank. Um, once an amount of time passes, we start to expand that search range. We just, the truth is, is that the amount of players queuing and ranked right now, finding matches in 600 range just doesn't really happen all that fast. So we're really hoping to get most of them at like the 1200, the 1500 range mark, where still players are well grouped. Um, and to kind of translate to that to Smite 1 terms, that is quite close to the old like 500, 750 MMR range, because we've now expanded all these ranges, right, with with new, with the SR change. Yeah. Um, so it expands. And then what happens is um, the, the rules that you can see on the side there is that if you're in a party, the system will use the max skill rating of your party. Mm. So if you are a player in a party with, you know, you have zero SR and your party member has 4000 SR, you are queuing as if you have 4000 SR. Um, the reason for this is that we would rather a ranked mode be taken competitively and seriously. Um, allowing a party side like that to average while we still don't have any SR restrictions on parties um, could probably be abused by people. We don't really want that. We don't want that 4,000 player to be matched as if they're 2,000 mm -hmm. SR. Um, so, and we're working with um, like Tracker, for instance, to be able to visualize on the website, hey, these two players are in a party. So if you see, you go back to like check your game afterwards, and you see, oh, there's a zero SR player in my game. How'd they get in my game? We're hoping to let you see, hey, no, 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 that player was queued up with this, you know, diamond player, right. mm -hmm. and they brought them into your match. Um, we're going to monitor that. If we're finding that players are bringing really bad players into matches, then we'll try to, you know, take a more um, complex approach to it, let's say. Um, but this is something that we could just kind of do right off the, right at the gate. And the yeah. second kind of... Yeah, go for it. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to scroll. If if you're the uh, if you're the you know if I'm partying with Lermy and she's dragging me into good games, um, do, am I gonna see increased SR gains if we end up winning because I'm so far below the average SR? Or like, how does that work? It it's tough, right? You you want them to be rewarded for beating really good opponents, but yep. you also don't want to make a system that like in, <laughs> lets people just boost other players. Definitely, yeah. That's um, why. Yeah, asking the question. So. So it will work similar to how it works now. There's no changes that have been made yet um, to how SR is calculated. So if you and Lermy get into a match and she's really good and you're really bad, and you're not assuming to say that you're really bad. Right Sorry, right <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am entirely <laughs> possible. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. You, I'm sure you are. Um, if, that was a very patronizing. Into, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you are very yeah. good. <laughs> um, if 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 all those conditions that are hypothetical and definitely not true exist, um, if the other team is expected to be better than your team, then yeah, you'll get you'll get boosted SR. Cool. Um, because what will happen from that match is that um, you will gain a lot of how the SR system works that we've talked about is that we are trying to estimate. We're giving you like a target range to hit. And if you are a bad player and you win that match, your target range will change differently, which means that you will gain more. Um, however, it's not being it's not significant. And the system is a little smart in the sense that if you win a bunch of matches in that scenario and then you go play a solo and you, you get like, you know, kicked around, um, it'll adjust you down pretty quickly there. So um, it's you're not I wouldn't say it's boostable, but there is an amount of, you know, math that happens to say, hey, you beat players that are considered better than you. Yeah. Um, and the other rule that I have listed here is that uh, players over 5,000 SR, the demigod rank, they're all treated as 5,000 SR demigod rank for this searching. So uh, the reason for this is that there's just there's not a lot of players that get over 5,000 SR. It's uncapped. So if you have a player at, say, like 7,000 SR and we're like, oh, we're going to filter you out so you can't be in a match with players that are, you know, 600 SR apart from you. There's, there's scenarios where there's players that are 600 SR above everyone else if they're really, really good. Right. Um, that's just not what we want. And we want people in that demigod deity range to 
play against each other kind of no matter what their SR is. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the design intent. So by setting them all to the same number for this system, uh, we're actually encouraging players of that rank to get into the ma matches together because they're kind of well suited. They're all grouped together in one search area. So um, we can play around with exactly where that number lies. All of these settings that I'm talking about here are kind of our, they're our second pass on them. Friday was our first patch yeah. pass. This morning we made a second pass and we're going to continue to update that as we get more data in and more players playing with the system. Cool. Uh, moving on, you want to talk a little bit about next steps. Let's talk next steps. Yeah. Um, so obviously, um, obviously improving ranked matchmaking is great, but ranked matchmaking makes up, you know, at most 25, 30 percent of yeah. our players at any given time. Um, this week, we're going to be taking that system and we're going to be incorporating it to the casual system um, uh, somebody on chat levels about casual. So, yep. yeah, yeah, we're going to we're going to be um, uh, incorporating it to levels. So um, the the main thing is just getting new new players more likely to be out of games with experienced players. Um, it's the first kind of common sense, low hanging fruit change. And this system that we we put in. The kind of idea was to make a system that allows us to add another search variable, right? And for ranked, it's going to be SR. And for casuals, it's going to be your levels. Um, but it's only our first pass. We want to do a lot of things with these matchmaking mm -hmm. systems. Um, but this is the the kind of first steps. And how exactly that will play out, not entirely sure as far as like where the level ranges will be, where the cap will be, all those things. Um, but it's the same idea of... Hey, if you're in your first 20 games, hopefully you're in the same match together. If you're past game 100, hopefully you're in the same match together and everyone else kind of mixes around. Um, and then past that, the next thing up will be party composition. So this one's a bit more complex than the previous two. Um, and it's going to have implications for casuals and for ranked. Um, but we really want to start taking a look at if one team has, let's say, a party of size three and two solo players we would really love it if we could make sure that the other team has a party of size three and two solo players. Um, equally balanced compositions always produce best game states. Um, but there's also compositions that work well together, right? Um, we can actually take a look at win rates of compositions against each other and we factor in all the player skill, blah, 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 blah. Something like a 3-1-1 is actually pretty equally matched up against the party of two, a party of two, and a solo player. So we're fine with that match also getting made because both teams don't have an inherent advantage based on their kind of communication styles. So that's the next step past levels. Um, and then once those three are in, we're going to take a, another step back. We're not going to make that many changes all that quick because we're going to work on more long term systems like the MOBA specific matchmaking that we've talked a lot about looking at roles. Um, but we can finally start actually taking it from systems that, you know, I've designed with the team and we have, you know, Python code for and we've have all these like simulations designed to being like, oh, no, this actually exists in a system, which is which is amazing. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting to see. And uh, if I can uh, answer a couple of chats questions about this real quick, um, there's a few people saying, you know, don't you just use level to match games, you know, it's just a time counter. Or, or when you say levels, what about bad players that play a lot versus good players mm. that rarely play? So my understanding is that this system will just be able to take into account your level as one of the factors that it's matchmaking on, not the only factor, right? Because we still have yeah. a hidden background matchmaking rating number that is our interpretation of your skill at the game. So it's not saying mm. you're only getting match made based on your player level. It's saying we're going to take that additional factor into account on top of your matchmaking rating so that we know that like maybe you're a level five player, but you have an eight billion matchmaking rating because you've won all your games <laughs> you so You did far. a lot in those five games, you know? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean that you're as good as somebody who's played the game for 8,000 hours and has an eight billion matchmaking rating who is, you know, has a 70% mm -hmm. win rate over 8,000 games or whatever. So um, it's it's just, Completely. this is one of the things that we've always wanted to do, right? Like in Smite 1, you had a lot of pitches for being able to do a system that took into account multiple factors like this, but we could never get there with the tech that we had, right? Yeah, no, completely. Um, that's, it's such a good point. There's, I have a old design slide that I could one day pull up, but it basically, we want to treat it as kind of 
Oh, I'm getting way too nerdy with this, but multidimensional. <laughs> no, that's why people this watch is the, what show. the show. That's is what for, the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like multidimensional space, right? Like on one axis, you have this kind of player skill innate that we're calculating. Another axis is experience. Another axis can be like player. There's there's a lot of talk about um, putting players that play in a similar way together in ten, in terms of like, oh, I really want to play like a team game. Um, there's a lot of like just like literature and people who have like done studies on things, putting players um, parties. Honestly, parties is another great one to be like, hey, let's get parties more often to be grouped together or these party compositions. So making sure that the searching space is in the same spot. But to talk specifically about like players who are new and either become really good or really bad, um, another space, another access to search in isn't just level. So experience, but um we have a few concepts of something that I've talked a bit about, which is like a kind of novice factor. And it's a really good way to separate out something like a Smurf from a brand new account, right? You can never stop players from making new accounts while being experienced players, um, but you can identify them pretty quickly and it's not going to change their level. And maybe their actual matchmaking rating doesn't update right away, but you can identify that they're like not a brand new account, not a novice pretty quickly. Um, and if we have that as a search kind of feature into our system, we can separate them out from the brand new players much quicker than if we didn't have it. Cool. Cool. Max, was there anything else in your tweet thread that you wanted to cover? Um, there's, uh, I'll say quickly that, you know, for elite, we have longer term plans. What was put into place was something. Oh yeah. We that didn't was... even mention that, you know, elite is going to be disabled as a part of yeah, this. Elite, yes. Yeah. Elite. Yeah. That's a big part of it. That's a big part of it. Actually, it was written, but I, I didn't think we said it out loud. Elite has been disabled so that all players should be playing in the normal ranked conquest queue. Um, the elite queue as it stood was implemented to get high SR players into the same game, um, which it succeeded at for again a while um queue times have been uh, a challenge for that system obviously when you're pr providing these like hard rules um making them play in a different queue um but we're, we're bringing that back and now we can kind of cook on elite more because that was a that was a system that we have plans for um more interesting kind of mm -hmm. levels of composite competition that aren't just ranked um for a separate queue like that so we're going to cook on that again um and bring it back when the time is right. Yeah. Um, I saw in chat someone ask, are parties of three going to be returning to ranked? And uh, it's a great question. And the answer is yes, but only when we have all the steps in place to make sure that that is something that's going to benefit everyone. And that's why we disabled it. Um, if we turned it on right now, what would happen is that we would have exactly those kind of party composition mismatches that I talked about existing with no filtering on it. Um, and a party of three plus a party of two versus all solos uh, in a game state where they're all the same, like approximate scale in SR, we expect that party of three and party of two team to win like over 60%, over 65% of their matches just because of their communication advantage. But all of our current matchmaking systems would say, oh, this is a fair match. So we're not going to do that to any solo players. We're not going to give trio cues that like insane advantage. What we are going to do is we're going to explore putting in uh, these party composition rules. Once those are in, we're also going to explore adjusting our SR formula so that um, if solo players are in a match with a party, their SR changes are reflective of the fact that they were maybe in a disadvantaged state. Um, the truth is, is that we cannot have a queue for that includes parties of size three without giving it any opportunity to match with solo players, some solo players. And there's a lot of ideas about which solo players to match them with and some players that are okay with it and other players that aren't. Um, however, if you, only have the match with players of size two, like we were doing before. Um, you're super dependent on them. And, uh, or it's better to say that if threes and twos can only go together, they're super dependent on each other. And if ones are apart, they're super dependent, though they can just play together. But what was happening is that those parties of two, they were just waiting for a party of three to show up. So they were searching for like 15 minutes, a party of three showed up and they immediately got into a match and it didn't matter any of like the balance of the match. 
what we need to have happen is solo players play together for like 80 90 percent of the games parties of twos and ones can mix together with that like remaining 15 percent of the 20 percent left over and then like five percent of the time solos will be able to mix with trios we want to make sure that we can create a mostly solo a few parties and some parties of three situation and with that and if we adjust our sr calculation i think that we can create a a game state that allows parties to mostly play parties solos to mostly play solos um and have sr rewards feel balanced given those states so it's complex. We don't want to rush putting trios back in, but we do want to put trios back in because what we saw when we had them in the game was so many new players were playing because there's so yeah. many parties of three. Mm-hmm. So many people wanted to play with their friends. And we love that. Like we want people to take rank to be able to play with people that they want to play with. So yeah, sorry for the very long answer no, there. No, um, this is great. But, yeah. And uh, uh, industry secret, uh, parties of three are the most common party size, which is why uh, a lot of games are built around trios instead of you know fours the way it used to be back yeah. in the day so mm-hmm. uh, no for sure there's a pretty significant fall off after yeah. threes to fours yes. cool um there's also a lot of questions about role priority and how we handle that now i, I know that like mm. that's a whole separate topic but um mm. maybe you could talk about it a little bit yeah um what, what was there a specific question that they had uh, I, there, there've just been a lot of different questions like, you know, how does role priority work? You know, uh, how, has role priority changed at all? Like how are mm-hmm. we determining yeah. who gets what role, that kind of thing. Right. So. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'll start from ranked and then I'll move on from there. But right now, one of the things that is like a known issue, I, I, there was a bug fix that was planned for this week. Um, so I'm not sure if it's already out or if it's coming out or, um, what the status on that is currently, but right now we're not currently determining for lobbies the top SR player correctly. So sometimes they're not getting put in first pick, and they're not being able to ban. It's something that we're hoping to fix. I, I'm not keeping the closest tabs on it, but I'll check in maybe after the show. But it is a known um, issue, yeah. and we're looking into it. It's a no. It's a known issue. It's a known issue. Someone is on it. Someone I think has fixed it in like dev. Anyways, yeah. it's making its yeah. way through the system. Um, that's impacting a bit of which player on the team gets highest role priority. So as people have seen right now, you get to rank your roles from one to five. Um, And when you get into a match, what the system does is it tries to create the most kind of optimal assortment of players getting their roles so that most players get their highest kind of roles possible. Um, Definitely avoiding, especially role four and five. Uh, Roll three, two, and one are much preferred by the system than those bottom two rolls. Um, there is a kind of known issue right now with players going on uh, roll two streaks, as I'd call it, where they keep kind of <laughs> losing coin flips, it seems, to get their top roll. And um, right now, the the numbers that we have, it's like 58% top roll, uh, 30-something percent um, second roll. Um, you know, we're we're doing, we're over 95%, I believe, top three roles so That's awesome. we're really happy with the numbers like they're it's doing great things overall but it doesn't mean that there isn't some spot issues that we're tracking yep. as far as like oh yeah these numbers are great for the population but this one person just ran eight games in a row and didn't get to play the role that they want and it's like okay we're okay to take a you know a percentage of a percentage point hit on how well we're doing at keeping top three in order to make sure that no player ever goes something like four or five games without yeah. getting a top roll. Like a pity um, counter kind of thing. Top, on it. Yeah. yeah, which is what we already have for people who ask about specifically priority. You get priority if you get outside of your top two roles. And I think that the obvious change here is to rework that so that you get a very small amount of priority if you just get your second roll, yeah. right? And that will allow us to eventually be like, oh, you got your second roll three times in a row? That's crazy. Here you go. Here's your top roll. Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um... But uh, yeah, we're it's something that we're we're looking at. We're happy. We're really happy with how it's going so far. Um, but the overall way that it works right now is population wide. Great. There's a few spot issues that we're tracking with it. Um, but yeah, I've got so many messages being like, I actually can't remember the last time I played a fourth or fifth role. And I was nice. like, that's awesome. That's awesome. Like, I'm 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 so glad that that's how it's working. Mm-hmm. It was honestly a bit of. Uh, free money when, when, we, <laughs> when we were looking towards, towards uh, Smite 1 and what to bring into Smite 2. 
uh, I took a look at the system and I was like, so when players don't get their top roll, it's just, just randomly just choosing which one to give it to them. And it's like, yep. And I was like, okay, that <laughs> feel like we can do better than that. Uh, and uh, it was, it, it's great, uh, but we're not done at all in terms of making sure that it uh, produces the best kind of game state for players. Right now, also, there isn't UI feedback for priority. Um, I think that there's a... F we, s we keep thinking that we fix um, ranked SR changes showing in post-match lobby and priority showing up, and then it keeps not showing up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're both tracked. They're both going to be um, fixed as soon as possible. Um, but you should have something that appears above like your play button that shows you when you have role priority. And it'll say priority if you're kind of in the bottom or middle stages of how much priority we're assigning to you. And it'll say high priority if it's like, okay, we, we've been, you know, messing around with you too long. Get you into your top <laughs> role. Um, so we're, 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 the feedback is hopefully going to get there soon. And if there's specific questions, I'll keep an eye on chat for a second here. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Yeah. So there's one question here, which I, I think I can answer, uh, which is, um, can we have the option to blacklist a role? And uh, I think mm -hmm. that would probably break things because we don't, we, we make the match first and then assign the roles. Right. So yeah. 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 Um, it would break things. It would break things in a certain way. Right. It would break things in the sense that, um, uh, we could have a situation where all five players in the match in, on a team have a blacklisted role. And then we go, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what we, I actually don't know what we would do. Um, uh, it would then, it would then go back to the situation of randomly assigning a player a role. Probably. Um, it's because we have decided or currently don't have role preferences set into the matchmaking algorithm. Um, it isn't something that would really make that much sense for us right now. Um, putting it as your fifth pick, um, it's so infrequent that it's effectively blacklisting. Um, there's been a few other things that players have asked, like, hey, instead of Phil being all the top role, can I, like, fill, like, can I choose one role and then fill after that? Because, you know, I really want to play mid, but if I don't get mid, I actually want to play, like, an even amount of all the other roles. And I think those kind of ideas are definitely things that um, are more likely for us to be able to do in the long term. Um but the reverse of like, hey, I want to play these roles, but never play these roles, um, especially when we're trying to be realistic about our matchmaking expectations. We're not, you know, uh, especially during off hours, you know, you, if you're going to queue up a game um, early in the morning or very late at night, uh, it could run into some really strange situations that we're trying to avoid for mm -hmm. now. Um, but one of the advantages, something that I keep talking about, because I'm a data guy and I and I, I love that stuff, <laughs> is that the system in the lets credits, us yeah. <laughs> officially in the credits data guy, uh, is that this system lets us see everyone's role preferences one to five, and if we get into a game state where we go, hey, we can start to look towards a more concrete role pipeline because we've achieved a nice balance of players playing roles, then that's not something that like I'll take off the table, you know. It's not something that I we would ever want to say is impossible. Um, but, you know, with Smite 1, it was very clear that if we had done that, support would have been a real issue for matchmaking. Like, a, a very genuine, like, from, you know, a few minute waits to, like, 20-plus minute wait in, like, Smite 1. Smite 2, support is getting a lot of love. And roles uh, right now, um, to do a spoiler live on air, I Spoilers. think Solo is the most is the most top picked role right Ooh, now. Um, yeah. And players who play solo are the most likely to have those. I get my second role five times in a row, six times in a row yeah. runs. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the current state of things. Won't take anything, you know, off the table, but that's why we don't blacklist roles currently. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. So another question, uh, does individual performance affect SR gain loss? I we could set aside honestly <laughs> an entire hour long show for me to talk we'll about performance because you, you know yeah yeah, yeah. Um, performance I keep wanting people to ask me this question about performance if I'm going to be so honest with you because <laughs> I think I think performance is such an interesting metric to track when we were first looking towards Smite Two um, one of the first things that I said we should do for ranked is do performance based changes. And 
It's, it's um, the trap that we, everyone we, falls into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone does. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not immune from it. And then uh, you ask the question, okay, how would you do that? And um, the, the truth of it is that it's not impossible. Uh, we actually came up with a system. We proved that we could kind of come up with a system for Smite 1 that we were happy with. I, I spent some time, um, and it's hopefully maybe something down the road that we can kind of show off, but coming up with a system for how to properly evaluate performance because you can't just do KDA. You can't do, just do gold earned because the very last thing that you want is a system like that to influence the way that players mm -hmm. play the game. If a team is losing... And the strategically correct choice is to stop playing Smite and start play Farming Simulator or start playing Dive Bomb, Get One Kill, and Die Simulator. Uh, it's a failure in all aspects. Mm -hmm. It has to be really complex, to be honest. It has to be. Uh, it has to allow players to play unique play styles and reward them for that. Um, and the worst thing you can do is underbake it and hook people playing fun yeah. and you have to play in a very specific strategic line um, because that's the right thing to do, right? You're playing ranked, you want to get more SR. So why are you doing something that's maybe a bit more fun, a bit more interesting that you still think will lead to a win if you're not doing the thing that our algorithm or whatever rewards you for? So what we do have is um, basically this idea that when you have enough data about roles and from those very specific roles and like God combinations, certain metrics that you can track uh, that lead to more frequent wins, um, there is a world where you can start to slowly evaluate performance, but this would be like a long-term process. Mm -hmm. The first thing we would do is just start showing like a letter grade to players and then get feedback on that. Be like, hey, were we right about this? Like, were we wrong about this? And then once that system is cooked for a while, then we can start going, okay, you did really well. You got like an A+, plus, but you lost. Here's your five SR buffer. Like, you, you lose five less SR. It would take the very final step of that system before we started rewarding players like plus SR. To be like, hey, you won. Here's your plus 20 SR for going crazy. Because... Again, it would just it would completely change the way players game if you did it wrong. So it'd be very long term. It's very interesting. Um, it's something that I think there's a want to explore because I think that it would make players feel really good. Mm -hmm. Like if you lose a game where, you know, you played well, it would be awesome to like have that shield apply and be like, oh, no, you're not going to lose 50. You're going to lose 30. Like that would just it would change the way that you played. You'd surrender less games. You'd leave less games. Um, but you have to do it right. So. Yeah. That's something it's on the longest, longest back burner, but it's Mobiles always there. Are just so complex, right? Like, I mean, I can yeah. think of a lot of games of Smite where I've not had a great game. And then at the end, I make some crazy play and I win the game for my team. But, yep. you know, my score, you know, like if I'm playing support of me or something, right, I'm like, you know, zero and 16 or yeah. whatever. <laughs> but I got one like four person freeze at the end of the game and I won the game for my team. Right. And it's like. Do, do you criticize that as a bad performance for me or do you give me the credit for making the game winning play? Like it's just so hard yeah. to get the nuances yep. of MOBA in there versus almost any other kind of game has a lot more clearly defined. This helps winning this, you know, this helps or this caused you to lose or whatnot. Yeah. So, um, completely cool. Uh, I, I know we've got um, a bunch of questions. We've got 15 minutes left. Yeah. Should we, Try and answer a few non-matchmaking questions for people. I know we have Max, but it, I, I feel like there's maybe some other questions yeah. in chat that we should get to. Yeah, yeah let's it. do it. Okay. Um, do you want to do you want to pick one? Ooh. Ooh. Um, I was not paying attention. I was listening <laughs> to the match, uh, well, matchmaking. So I, interesting. I, I'll throw. I'll grab this one because this this guy said this one a lot a lot of times. Have you guys th thought about adding what weather changes to the map, mm -hmm. like storm weather or whatnot? I think we've we have thought about ways to add more like variability to a match of conquest and more change and, and things to think about while you're playing. Yeah. Um, and I think that if we were to add weather, it would be that kind of thing. At one point in time, during very early planning for Smite 2, we had talked about like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if like when, when Zeus does his ultimate, it, you know, made it rain in the area or, or uh, chalk, you know, like, right. like things like having 
smaller God things interact it. And we were like, that's going to be way too noisy. It's going to be too much. If we do something like that, that changes the feel of the map, it needs to be like a game changing core mechanic. Yeah. So it's stuff that we've had discussions about internally. Um, it's not immediate on our roadmap. Uh, like I said, in the past couple of shows, most of our environment focus right now is on Joust um, because I've seen a lot of people in chat today say, I'm not playing Smite 2 until Joust comes out. Yeah. It's a very common refrain from people. So uh, Joust is our current environment art focus, but we are thinking about things like weather and other bigger game-changing things for Conquest going forward. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I see a question. Where, uh, when will VET, VEL, and VEJ be excluded from flood protection just like in Smite 1? Oh, uh, we could probably just ask somebody to do that after the yeah. show. It's probably doable. Take a look at it, yeah, yeah, probably just got lumped in there. Uh, I didn't People realize love they their were spam on, laps, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, I guess with uh, with Raw soon on the docket, oh, you know, know, you have right? to be able to spam laps. You have to spam lap yeah. Raw. It just doesn't feel right. Um, told people are asking about uh, uh, throughout the years, the design teams tried multiple things to spice up the Conquest map. Some changes more well-received than others. Have there ever been any talks or are there any plans for Smite 2 to try adding a true river going through the map, similar to other MOBAs, to see how it would affect Smite's gameplay? Um, it's something that's come up through the years. Um, I think the benefit of a river is that it more clearly delineates my side of the map versus your side of the map. I think that's the single biggest reason. And it also creates a straight path to go from one side of the map to the other. It also um, creates an area that doesn't have a lot going on uh, and is basically just a path to run down. Like you could put some small jungle camps in it. You know, you would probably put Gold Fury off one side and Fire Giant yeah. off the other and whatnot. Um, it also, I think, just doesn't work as well in the third person MOBA where you can see infinite distances or not quite infinite, but you can see a long way, right? right? Yeah. Um, so I think it's something that we've considered in the past. It's something that we've messed around with. I think that we like keeping the teams a little bit closer together and having the jungle a little more interwoven for right now. Uh, but it's definitely something we've considered and maybe we'll find a way to do it that feels good for some point in the future. This guy has asked a lot about Arachne. Um, uh, Arachne <laughs> is unfortunately not I'm uh, sorry. Uh, one of the first 50 gods. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, fam. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 uh. Arachne is uh, not ultra popular, I would say, and also is a difficult god for us from a balance perspective Yeah. Um, because uh, Arachne is almost always like uh, Max knows numbers better than me, like a 60% yeah, win rate god yeah. in Smite 1. Max and, is the perfect person. And people are like, acne, yeah. she feels weak, <laughs> you should buff her. And it's like, she is already super duper OP. She just doesn't feel that way. And gods with kits that don't feel balanced when they are balanced are kind of a bigger problem to bring over because it's like, if we gave Arachne a plus one on top of all the stuff she does now and just made her more powerful and everybody still felt like yeah. she wasn't powerful enough, that would be uh, an issue for us. So uh, I know some people are like, oh, just give her back the pull and the eggs yeah. and let her jump on people's backs again. I don't think that's the answer either. Um, but I think that uh, my, I'm not a designer, but my guess would be when Arachne comes over, yeah. we'll need to take a little bit more of a look at her to make sure that she still feels like the Arachne you've been playing, but uh, is a little more balanced. So yeah. gods that are going to take more. Sorry, go for it. No, no. I was just going to say that she's a classic case of uh, she's she's really good in some spots, some cues. Like she genuinely is like 60% win rate in certain like casual queues with certain levels. And then like high level ranked, you know, she's generally well below the 50% yeah. mark historically. But it's only in the highest levels of rank. It's like yeah. you can get up to like, I don't know, like platinum or diamond or something. And she's still yeah. like 60% win rate. It's crazy. Yeah. So. And, 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 and then you'd make a small change and in like the highest level it flips and then she's really high again. Yeah. So yeah, no, you're completely right. She's super volatile. Um, and there's a few problem characters that we've put a little double circle around. Yeah, and we know uh, I would, say, we I would think it's specifically, I saw a Reddit comment about this, uh, Arachne, basically your auto attack junglers, like your yes. Arachnes, your Kali's, your Bacchusuras are definitely double circled for us to definitely pay special attention to when we look over to bringing them to Smite 2, just because when those characters are in the game, the dynamic of them just being available, just it kind of changes the way that you have to think about the game entirely, right? Mm -hmm. Having those characters available, being able to clear the jungle so fast, rotate so fast. So definitely characters that we're keeping an eye out for, but not in the first 50. I uh, saw a question here um, about impacts on 
solo rando commandos that Q Dog <laughs> keep getting matches. I love that. Um, <laughs> which is an insane title for them, but it's solo rando it's commandos. Tech. Okay, we gotta we gotta um, that, right. And I um I know that it's actually been something that's been uh, talked about recently. And Alex or Isaiah, you can jump in to kind of flesh this out. But at least from like let's talk a ranked match perspective. Um, we're we're trying to get some stuff in to get back like the classic might one ranked features of like win loss protection when you have people leave the match early and stuff like that. So we're we're trying to make headway on that feeling less bad. Um, I have there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with that because you're never going to stop pe- people from leaving a match. I've seen screenshots of people being like, hey, man, I got to go. My wife is giving birth. And it's like, why are you playing a video <laughs> game right now? <laughs> yeah, go, obviously. Yeah. But it's just it's just like people will, pl- will do crazy things. You can never stop it. So how to handle it is always obviously like the the best question to ask. Um, I'm a big mitigate it feeling bad for people who are in it because you can never stop it. It's the same way like if someone leaves a lobby, um, want to explore stuff like backfill to get people back into the lobby faster mm-hmm. instead of just focusing on the punishments, although it's a really good topic. But I know, Alex, maybe you have some more thoughts on this topic as well. Uh, no, I think I think you kind of nailed it. I don't really have too much. Okay, sweet. Um, I, I will answer another question here, though, that just I saw pop up that says, can f 6 at five minutes with the DC come back to Smite 2? Um, yes, we actually had a thread about that this morning. We're working on getting that back in as soon as we possibly can. So um, uh, understood that that is uh, a feels bad. Yeah. So working on that. Um, I, I will also note the uh, are there plans to fix T-screen halting movement on console? Um, that is a known issue. I was talking with the UI team about it this week. Um, I'm not sure when it will get fixed. It seems like it's a slightly bigger issue than we thought, especially because that screen is kind of a little bit temp right now, and they're yeah. planning to make it a lot better. Um, but it, that is a known issue. Yeah. So. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the can of worms just because I've seen oh, it. Geez. I've seen it every almost every Titan talk that we we've had. Siege. Siege. Oh, okay. I thought you, I oh. thought you were gonna say oh. Persephone. Oh yeah. I thought I for sure thought it was Persephone, man. Oh, I thank you all out. Nice. Was... Um, <laughs> Siege. So Siege it was actually one of my favorite smite modes for years. Um, I played a ton of Siege, um, and uh, I actually like like. I was a Smite player before I worked at the company, and one of the things that made me like a Smite super hardcore player was watching some of the streams of Siege when it first came out. Like I played, a, I started playing around when like Cupid came out, so pretty early. Yeah. Um, but like like watching people playing Siege got me like really into yeah. the game. So I definitely appreciate it. Um, I think that what we've seen in our numbers, and Max might know more about the numbers, but is the modes that people play the most in Smite One have always been conquest, arena, joust, assault. Yeah. And then whatever the fifth mode is, whether it's siege or clash or slash or, uh, you know, Apollo's race or rumble, you know, uh, (laughs) those are significantly lower in terms of popularity. So our priority has been, let's get those four core modes in, and then we'll decide what we're going to do after that for, you know, do we do like a turbo conquest? Do we do a clash? Do we do slash again? Do we do siege? Do we, do we just do like those as MOTDs or something? Like, I think that's kind of where our head is right now. I know there's a lot of people who, you know, share my love of siege. Uh, I was one of the ones when we merged the two game modes, I was one of the ones that was really pushing for getting the uh, siege minions into slash. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, yeah, I think it's definitely not a priority right now, given the amount of people that choose to play the mode in smite one. Yeah, Max agrees. Cool. Um, what is Turbo Conquest? Turbo Conquest was... Oh, we haven't talked about yeah, that. Turbo yeah, Turbo Conquest <laughs> is just like something we've talked about internally. Like it not necessarily uh, like slower or quicker cooldowns or anything, but it's just something we've talked about like, oh, well, what if we had more like golden XP scaling, but you're still playing on the Conquest map and we just tried to make it like you were playing a game of Conquest, but the game got done in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Kind of more like an arena game pace but on the conquest map. Mm -hmm. Um, It's something that would be like a lot of, you know, nothing is easy, right? It would be a decent amount of work. There's some people at the studio don't feel like it's a good idea. I'm kind of on the fence about it, Um, you know, but that, that's, uh, was the pitch for turbo conquest. So um, something that we had thought about. Yeah. I also just on on the back of things that were talked about, I saw it. I, I I don't know. I'm kind of going off script here, guys. No, do it. I saw I saw a I saw a 
uh, people like theorizing from a um, like a data mining post or something like that, that there was going to be ranks of every mode and we're going to be crazy <laughs> Q splitting. That is, that is, that isn't happening. It's yeah, not happening. Not happening. No, yeah, I don't, arena. I don't know. That is not. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I, I almost, I was like, I don't, I, I don't want to comment on a, on a, on a data mining post, but I almost did on that one. Cause I was like, this is, yeah. Not yeah. <laughs> uh, Nebula shadow says Cupid and Afro dual release for Valentine's day. I don't think you're going to have to wait till Valentine's yeah, Day for either of those gods. Uh, uh, spoiler, um, uh, Afro is in our internal play test right now. Yeah. So um, she is f- pretty far along in development. She's not going to be the next god or anything. Um, but I definitely see all the people asking about Afro in chat. And I see someone asking about Afro under almost every Smite game yes. social post. Yes. So. Um, we need to get more of a true healer in the game. Uh, and I think Afro is a fan favorite character who we need to get in as part of the first 50. So uh, Afro is uh, one of the first 50. Yeah. Hearts in chat. Yes. <laughs> uh, and now everybody's just excited. About I know. That, right? I can't read yeah. chat. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> oh, Afwash asking for Afwash. That's so, so <laughs> yeah, Afwash is one of those. He's actually like not as hard as you would think to get done, but he does have a lot of like weird tech. Like one of the things that actually makes him really hard to get over is like, he has some weird custom tech to make the, uh, the like, uh, zombies, skeletons, whatever mm-hmm. they are, in his alt run along. And those are actually like the source of the damage in the alt. You don't get damage just by standing in the field. You get damage when you're hit by one of the things. And that apparently is like a weird, unique custom yeah. piece of tech that we'd have to rebuild. Um, so he's on, you know, he's one of those characters that we've definitely thought about, but Opwash is not in the very first next group. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm not going to go through each god one by one, yeah. but because you call it Opwash, <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to answer that one. Um, um, I saw someone ask if. Uh, Joust will have rank on the drop. I think that the answer is that we want to have Conquest probably be the only ranked mode for a while. However, we also have plans for basically to not split the queue, but allow players to have a more competitive experience yeah. within the, their their casual queue um, if that's what they're searching out. We think that's kind of a, a good path forward. Not queue split, but add in something maybe as simple as just leaderboards to a casual queue to, to allow there to be competition. But um, just as don't want a queue split, but we want to offer something. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I saw one question a few minutes ago, um, which I wanted to come back to about off screen damage numbers. Oh yeah. Um, that is something that we know that we are missing and we do intend to have come back. It's another one of those like, oddly difficult technical challenges to make happen. Um, but it, it is on the roadmap and I believe should be in the next yeah. couple months here. So um, it's one of the big things that contributes to not knowing if you've hit somebody with an ability when you turn mm-hmm. around, you know. Um, so it's definitely a big feels thing that we need yeah. to get in there. I love throwing the Thanatos Scythe and just 180 to try and get the next kill. And <laughs> There's a question. Have you heard of the Herc violently shaking glitch? I have not heard of this one, <laughs> but I love the description of it. So if you have more details, uh, please pass those along. Yeah, pass those along for sure. Um, so is it possible to get a button to swap consumables from their keybinds? Um, mm. So you can uh, drag and swap them, um, but there is not a single button you can push mm. to swap them uh, the way you can on Smite 1. Um, and, or if you're on controller, if you navigate down to it, I think you push, I forget which button it is. You push one button and then you go to the right and push a yeah. button and you can swap them. So, um, it's a little more complicated than it is in Smite one. We're working on a more console specific version of the item store, which should alleviate a lot of those console specific concerns. Um, I'm not sure if it will have one button consumable swapping, uh, but I will check and see. Will assault be added to the game? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Assault is the other, you know, kind of the big four modes. Um, our plan for Assault is that the first version of Assault that y'all will play um, will not have its own custom arted map because if we took the time to make a new custom arted map, um, you wouldn't be able to play Assault for another six months or so. Um, and that seemed like too long to keep Assault off the table. So um, the current plan is that we're going to take the Conquest map um, and we're going to kind of carve out the middle lane of the Conquest map and we'll play Assault there. Yeah. Um, it'll be the, the Assault rule set that you know and love. Um, we've talked about like oh, maybe do we include a little bit of jungle so there's something to fight over, like maybe like one objective or something. Um, that's not 100% decided yet. You know, we're still kind of early days on it, but um, there will be the assault rule set on the uh, on the, the conquest map. Yeah. All right. 
Should we do the one more question? Okay, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. geez, it's so late already. I know, this right? Has been, yeah. <laughs> we had so much interesting time information from Max. We didn't fun. get a lot of yeah. question time in today. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, no, I'm just no. too interesting. No, it was great. <laughs> I, I always love when we have like super informed people on the show yeah. who can talk in depth about subjects that we can't, right? Right. Like, we have a lot of like general knowledge. We can answer a lot of questions, but like to get that deep on matchmaking, we definitely needed you here. So we yeah. appreciate it. Of course. Okay, everybody picks one question. That's our that's our oh, tradition yeah, for the thing. end of the show. Okay. So uh, whichever okay. question you like the best, go for it. D- don't make me go first. I haven't picked yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will not answer a question. And then uh, to give you guys a little bit, what's Raw's plus one? Yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it soon. Um, we are, we, Raw, I believe, is going to be in the next group of gods. Yeah. Um, he is coming along very well. Um, but I don't think we're quite ready to talk about his plus one yet because it's still a little bit in active development. And uh, I don't know if it's going to change or not, but it's just, uh, I, I heard some discussion about it in this morning's play test. So I don't want to spoil it yeah. too much. Oh, I can give an update on text chat. That'll be the one that I, oh, I yeah. actually do Go answer. That's a good so, question. So um, we are planning text chat in uh, for pre-match lobby, in-game, and post-match lobby is the current plan. Not whispers and not party chat because those are a, a lot of extra work that people don't um, get as much value out of because most people are just in parties on Discord these days. Um, and, or they're on their console, you know, in an Xbox party or whatever. Um, so... We do want to get text chat in for those three places um, sooner than later. We're still working with a couple text chat providers to make sure that when we get it in, it has the right level of um, toxicity screening and whatnot. So I would say in the next few months, we anticipate that it'll be in, um, but it's not immediate, but it's something that we understand as a big priority and we need to get done. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I have a lot of people tagging me with unrelated questions about me or my jacket, uh, and <laughs> it's making it very hard to, to focus um, on on which one It's like, can uh, we get a fit pick. check, you know? Like <laughs> fit check. Uh, well, you would see that I am in pajama pants. There you go. Uh, nice. Off screen. Um, I think uh, what I'll pick is someone was asking about if the top in the lobby is top ELO, and I actually think it's kind of an interestingly worded question because ELO isn't SR. Um, and as we've kind of talked about, we have a few different ways that we, we rank players, but we are going to be planning to do kind of ordering lobbies by top SR, um, for bands and picks. And one of the kind of funny things about ranked in Smite 2 is that when you start with such a small God pool, you're starting to expand it out, right? Smite 1, we had everyone got one ban. Um, it's a system we like for ranked. It's really fast. Um, we don't know exactly when we're going to pull the trigger on it, but we will eventually go back to a system that is a lot more like that. And top player won't be as impactful of a role. So uh, right now it isn't top ELO. It's designed to be top SR, but it is bugged as we talked at the start of the show and it's currently being fixed and it's probably fixed this week. Um, uh, But yes, uh, that is uh, uh, the current state of it. Uh, And yeah, we're going to keep kind of making updates to how those lobbies work. And as Flare Boot said in the chat, Max's line of thought was successfully derailed. So <laughs> you guys did. All right, Isaiah, last All question right, of the cool. day. I saw a good question, and I think it'd be good for everyone to weigh in on this one. Uh, can we get another ranked ban in the next update? And I think it's a good thing for us to kind of close off on and like, what's a good threshold before we start adding more bans to ranked as the roster yeah. continues to grow at a rapid pace since we're kind of speeding things up a little bit more? I think I honestly think that the best way to do it is just go by community feel. If we mm-hmm. they feel like we don't have enough bands right now, then and we start to hear that feedback more and more, then I think that adding a second band, it's something that I think is literally just a number press. I don't think we're going to go over two because then it gets really long. Back, yes. forth, back, forth, back, forth. Um, once we get to the point where it's like three, it'll probably be okay to do five and just give everyone a band because then bands overlap from both teams. You oh, only yeah, end up banning the, the new system. Yeah, anyways. The, uh, yeah, the new system. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, we'll keep it. We'll keep our our ear to the ground. If we start hearing more people want it, then maybe that's something that happens sooner rather than later. And I'm going to argue against it for a reason uh, that uh, Mike Mowry says is a reason why we should do it. Uh, More unbalanced gods plus more bands equals more balanced matches. But if we don't see gods being played, it's hard for us to know how to adjust them. That's true. Right. In this Mm -hmm. alpha phase, I think that you can make the argument that less bands is better from a perspective of we're more likely to make the game more quickly by seeing how exactly a God is broken and let us try and fix it. Um, but 
I understand that it's frustrating to play with broken, unbalanced gods. So I think that we probably need to be more aggressive in like, if a god has that new wall level, uh, you know, just bug that's broken, ruining the game, we should probably just disable them. Um, so you don't have to waste a ban on them. Uh, and you know, we're not learning anything from it. Uh, but I think that in general, it's good for the long-term health of the game right now to have more gods in ranked matches, even if it's, uh, you know, annoying at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, Max is cute as a button. I agree. Chaos, right? <laughs> Come on, man. I was really hoping you wouldn't read it out. <laughs> awesome. Uh, wrecked. Oh, <laughs> man. Sweet. Well, uh, chat, thanks so much for joining us for Monday's edition of Titan Talk. Max, thanks so much for coming on. It yes. Was super Me dope. Time. Our first remote guest. They I know, right? Pretty technically we well. Thank you, tech. production. I know, right? Shout yeah, out to thank Jameson. you, production. Shout out Jameson, man. That I was know, crazy. Right? Out of Doing stuff mid, live. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know how he did it because he's not even in the office today. I yeah. don't know. He's got some wizardry going on. But definitely. Definitely appreciate our production folks for getting us set up here to do these shows because we love doing them. It's awesome mm-hmm. being able to hang out with the community, you know, on a on a more consistent basis. Definitely. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday is 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live stream, check out the VOD on YouTube. We've also got the audio on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So there's literally Titan Talk everywhere if you missed the live stream. So yep. until next time, Wednesday, we will uh, uh, With see a surprise you. guest because we don't have oh, a yeah, guest lined up yet. So it might yet. just be me and Isaiah or we might have a fun guest. We'll let you know yeah. when we know. Cool. But until then, uh, chat, thanks so much for hanging out. We will catch you Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, maybe a guest, maybe not. But until then... We'll see you on the battleground. Peace out.